and they've, you know, done the ultrasounds and they might ha already know the cord is around his neck. But if the vitals are good and the baby's heart rate is really good in their meetings with the OB doctor, it's probably okay. But you guys, it's common. It's really common and it's really easy to get that cord off their head. So we'll talk about that as well. Okay, so those are um, drugs, medications, allergies. A lot of women are on prenatal vitamins. They're on some kind of enhancement um, drugs. I can't think of the name of it, but they give the baby, uh, uh, give the mom the, the vitamin or whatever for the baby's brain health. You wanna know her allergies as well. <clears throat> Gravidapara, this is the G. This means how many pregnancies has she had, including this one, and how many live births she's had. So if she's gravida four, para three, what does that mean? One still birth. Three. Three. Yep, four pregnancies, three live kids. This one, when it's born alive, will be the para four. So she's not para four yet, right? Because she's still pregnant pushing it out. Once the baby's born, now she's gravida four, para four. Now think about this. Can you be gravida four, para six? No. no. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Twins, Twins are triplets, oh, right? Yeah. Lock them up. <laughs> so, you, why would you want to know if she's had triplets or twins before? Because she could be having a lump cake. Yeah, she could be having this time. Well, is this a twin? Are you having twins this time? Because I need to call for more help. You're going to ask her, right? What if she's gravida three para zero? She's stillborn. Stillborn. Yep, she's either had a stillborn, a couple abortions, um, miscarriages along the way. We don't really need to get into depth of that, but if she's like gravida 10, para one, we're scared, right? Because something happened in all of her pregnancies that we need to be aware of. This one could be born a stillborn or something like that, right? Okay, but it probably won't. Expected due date, that kind of goes on up there with the prenatal care. Hopefully if she's seeing the doctor, she knows her due date. And then you're gonna do the math in your head too, because if I say I'm due July 8th, and today's what? Am I good? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a little early, but I'm way good, right? What if my due date is August 1st? Yeah. Not good. And I'm having contractions. We want to get her to the hospital to stop her contractions so that baby can cook a couple more weeks, right? <laughs> All right, so yeah, we want to get her to a better point so her baby's good. See why I don't want you to put it on YouTube? Don't you dare put me on Facebook. What's the limit of what? The due date? Yeah. 34 so weeks, remember? 34 weeks. So 40 so weeks yeah. is the normal gestation so period of a human being. So if it's under 34 weeks? We're worried. We need to get her to the hospital so they can stop her labor. Paramedics in some areas can give a medication to help stop the labor. I don't think Riverside County has it. But you could ask a paramedic or Mr. Um, Dr. Nolette. At 34 weeks, if she, if, um, she can't hold it, you, you can still give birth to her. Yes. Right? Well, yeah. yes, yes, yes. If it's no, coming no, no. out, you're going to deliver it whether or not it's... With him being good or not. No. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, but be good. ready to support the baby. Respirations, keep it warm. You may have to ventilate with a little TDBVM or do blow by oxygen to that baby. You might have to really work on that baby to keep it crying and alive. If the baby is due August 1st, that's only about four weeks away. So Yeah, it, so we're risky, good. But it's right, okay. 36 weeks she should yeah. be. How about like yeah. September? Uh-uh. No. So you really want to know that due date. That's just my point to that. Yes, ma'am. What about if they tell you they're like a month and a half to two months late? Late? Uh, then the baby's going to be big. <laughs> And you might not be able to get a vaginal delivery. I had a brother who was over a month and a half late. My oldest brother was over a month and a half late. And how much did he weigh? Um, I don't remember how much he weighed. I know he does have scarring in his lungs from inhaling his own feces in the womb. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we talked about that, too. That's the meconium birth. The baby can, in utero, do his first bowel movement. And it's kind of greenish, brown, nasty stuff. So remember when I said the fluid's going to come out? 
Like you're gonna look at it too as the baby's coming up. See if it's black? tinged. Huh? No. His first one is that supposed to be bleeding. Black. No, black. his first poop black. is black. Yeah, but if it's yeah. come, if he pooped on Inside? during the delivery, you don't want him to inhale that because he'll have aspiration pneumonia and maybe die if he breathes in or drinks that amniotic fluid and sucks it into his lungs. So you know they're always they're always. Um, being, um, that's the way they breathe with the amniotic fluid. It's just going in their mouths, expanding their lungs, it gets peed out all this time while it's in the uterus, which is a closed environment, a closed capsule. And not often does the baby poop while he's in there. It's usually the stress of delivery that causes them to have their first bowel movement in the birth canal and then the complications from that. Okay? But big babies, think of that. If there, she's past 40 weeks, I don't know why they would let her go that long, but maybe she has a scheduled C-section for Monday, and now she's in labor on Saturday. That happens more than not. So what would you do if the You're going to try to deliver it, mm -hmm. but like if you, no, you delivered them and they have like... Meconium, you're going to clean yeah. off their um, airway, you're going to use your bulb syringe, that thing right there, you're going to suction, suction, suction that airway constantly and make sure you get all the black, gooey, greeny stuff out. Yeah, thank you. There's my cutting tool. Okay, so um, bag of waters, bag of waters is, did it break? Did it have an odor or color? And when and where did it break? Because if it's in the home, you want to go look at it, right? You want to just kind of give your idea that it doesn't have meconium in it. If it's not bloody, you want, you want to know those things. You want it to be a clear, odorless um, water, amniotic fluid. You want that. If it has any discoloration to it or blood, you're going to worry that this mom may hemorrhage. Maybe something happened that she tore or the uh, um, placenta tore away from the wall of the um, uterus and that caused bright red blood. Okay, so we're worried when we see bright red blood on a birth. Okay, so the next three things that we're gonna ask her after all these questions, you guys make a card with this, kind of go over it with each other so you know your pledge bow, like I didn't. And then um, the next thing is imminent delivery, so that's when we're gonna make our decision to stay here and deliver this baby versus getting in the rig and delivering it at the hospital. It is, if her contractions are two to three minutes apart, which your partner's doing that, he's holding her stomach, it should get rock rigid hard. She's like in pain, breathing through her contraction. You're timing it and she breathes and relaxes. And then, oh God, here comes another one. Okay, we're, we're staying, right? If it's that close, under two minutes, we're staying here and having the baby. And then, um, is it crowning? Okay, so you're gonna look, you're gonna scoot her pants and underwear off. She might already be that way when you get there. And you see this bulge in the perineum, you guys. So you see it like a softball right between her legs. You'll see the head is right there ready to come out. You may see hair on the little Asian baby. You may see a bald head on a little white baby. And you'll see the cutest little curly cues on the little black baby. It looks like somebody took a felt pen and drew little ringlets. It's so adorable. So anyway, and you'll notice that it's not a butt, right? That it's the head <laughs> or not an elbow or whatever. You're going to check and see that crowning is present. And you're going to um, ask her if she has the urge to push. Shh. Anybody here giving birth besides me? You guys should be in the magazine. You should be famous. What? All right, the urge to push cannot be stopped. <laughs> it feels like the most overwhelming desire to push this baby out. I'm done. I've been doing this for 40 weeks. I'm going to push this baby out no matter what. It kind of feels like a great big bowel movement to the mom. Like the best one you ever had. <laughs> like you evacuated. All right. But that urge is so overpowering that if you don't want her to push yet, you're going to have to look at her eye to eye and go, come on, stop, stop pushing. No, 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 don't push, don't push. No, puhe. No, no, stop. Because they will push as hard as they can. Yeah. We want in the field to deliver the head, do some stuff, get her to stop pushing, and then on her next contraction, push the shoulders and the rest of the body out. That's the ultimate goal. If the baby comes all out in one push, 
at least you've got your hand there to hold it to prevent expulsion or the baby shooting out against the back wall of the ambulance or whatever because she will have that power it is that power okay mr duncan the doctor and the nurse went to catch kelsey when i pushed her out she came out like a little rocket and they all went to grab her so she wouldn't fall in the trash at the bottom of the delivery table yeah so i was glad all six hands were there to grab her because i did push that hard and that was my fifth child so imagine that all right keep it in your imagination all right so we've decided to have this baby now right we've decided yes sir oh no this is an emt skill above and beyond no 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 the paramedic is not going to do this you guys are. Oh, we are? You're gonna get yeah, in yes. all the muck and guck. He's gonna start an IV. He might put the heart monitor on her, get her on oxygen, or start writing paperwork. He is not gonna do this, I guarantee. You. Unless he's a go-getter and he really wants to do it. But most of the time it's the EMT doing this and then he's doing the assessment and taking care of the baby, worrying about suctioning and oxygen and that kind of thing. So he does all the vital stuff while just sit there and actually give me a clean heart. Yeah. And you're cleaning up as well. You get to clean up. And he gets paid more than you. All right. Let's do this fast. Okay. So now I've decided to stay here because I'm having the baby. It's two minutes apart. She wants to push. She's crowning. We've checked all of it out. And we put this Chuck's pad thing underneath her fanny, right? She's not sick. Ask her to lift her hips up and stick it under there so it catches all the goo. Oh, I gotta, yeah, do there. I gotta put this back. There you go. All right. So then I go through my OB kit because I want to make sure I had a sterile one. Remember, I want to make sure I have a sealed bag or box that it came in. And I'm gonna start opening up everything. Even my partner should start opening up everything because it's really hard when the baby's coming out to start emptying all this stuff out and, and gathering it up. And everything is double wrapped. I love it. So you've got your sterile bag that is right here. And then you've got alcohol wipes. You've got OB wipes to clean her perineum so the baby's head. Um, this is so old. All right. You've got cord clamps. See how they're sealed up? You just want to open all these packs and have them laying here ready. Okay, so you're going to open them. This this one came with two in one. That's really good. So you only have one thing to open. These gloves are too big for me. Okay, so yeah, you're just going to drop everything right here, kind of in your work area. You've got a pad, an OB pad for after when she's bleeding. So you want to open it and have it ready. Open your pack and have the OB pad ready. You want your bulb syringe. See how it's sealed up? Everything, open it, open it, open it. So we'll use this one that's opened already. These are the three towels they give you to clean the baby with. Aren't they generous? <laughs> so you might have extra towels. You can use the four by fours. They're sterile as well. You're gonna open them up, have them ready to clean the baby off. You've got these sterile gloves. And I'm not gonna show you today how to put them on because it takes a few practices to do it, but you wanna open them up and you